Remember when they hated, didn't think we make it Now they break their neck just to look at me Remember when I called you and you didn't fall through Now you hate yourself, you can't look at me, look at me yeah. You made me For all my Fox Body people that are interested in knowing how we took my Fox Body from stock angle to this, make sure you stay tuned and you watch the whole thing. This video is a lot different from what I usually do. This is more of an informal video. There's a lot of information in here, but I wanted to make sure this was more formal for everybody that has a Fox Body. So I wanted to try to put as much information as I could into one video. If you guys are interested in figuring out, you know, a whole bunch of suspension stuff for all the people that are interested in all that and love a lot of information, I promise you this is the video for you. And what up, what up, what up? What's good with y'all? All right, so what are we getting into today? You guys see right now, I am currently at the shop. Uh, Aaron's at home sick, so I'm in this thing solo bolo. I got my auntie at my house watching my granny, so I decided that uh, just to get out the house, come to the shop and get some work done, man. So right now I'm here solo dolo, but Duncan's supposed to be on his way. Duncan is the guy that makes all the suspension stuff for the um, for the Fox body. He's the one who developed the angle mod and everything for this thing. So he's on his way. Me and him are gonna be throwing everything on the uh, on the Fox today and hopefully seeing how far we can get with this thing. But yeah, today it's gonna be just a day of full Fox and me and him just knocking this thing out, trying to get this thing done. So unfortunately, Aaron isn't here to help us, but you know, uh, I got the person who designed the kit actually here uh, to help me get this thing together. That way we know it's together proper. Once he gets here, I'll have him explain kind of like his angle kit because he knows this thing, obviously because he made it, but he can give you guys the whole rundown and all the information on it and why it works and all that for all the Fox Body people that are interested in possibly having a whole bunch of angles. So I need to move all these cars around, get stuff out of the way, that way we can get this thing on the lift. Just move those Z's and G's out. Now I need to get this thing on the lift. I'm about to go sit on this nice couch right here. Your boy tired. It's a workout, especially going over this little dumbass hump right here. <sighs> Fighting gravity, welded diffs. Ugh. We got my man Duncan right here, the creator of the super angle kit that be saving all the Fox bodies out there at the side show. <laughs> helping. So yeah, we're about to uh, get, get these arms and stuff all on here. You guys gonna see a huge difference in the amount of angle this thing has. Huge difference. Let's see. Look, this is full lock, stock angle. Bruh, garbage. 12 point U turn. <laughs> it literally is that, dude. Oh, yeah, it's bad. Look at that. That is garbage. So, I don't think I showed y'all this last time, but remember when I told y'all we had to run the spacer on, the, um, on here? Obviously, the spacer isn't on there no more, but it's because of this right here. So, for the older foxes, they have this dumbass bearing that you basically assemble and slide in there like that. And remember I told y'all like the new edge and SN95 front setup doesn't have that. So y'all can see the difference right there. So for anybody that was thinking about running con size on the front of a, on the front of a Fox without having SN95 spindles and stuff, it's not really going to work unless you use a spacer. So you can see the difference right there. A lot smaller and the problem is the hub bore on the wheel doesn't clear this point right here it just hits it so you need the spacer to run it other than that if you got sn95 stuff or you do full disc conversion with the sn95 new edge stuff then you won't really have an issue with it all right so everything coming off next more than likely is going to be the knuckle Well, these control arms are coming off. We got the Maxim Motorsport tubular style going on here. People will be gonna be surprised though. Like, man, this Fox body handle hella good. You're a naturally really good driver too. Oh, I well, thank you. Since we're not saving any of this stuff, we want it off quick. Maybe. There it goes. I should have had a bigger hammer. That's what she told you. <laughs> Yeah. 
This is the common problem. I kind of mentioned it in my like my last video when I was uh, bringing the suspension and stuff and showing them. But what's the difference between this rack and that rack? Because there is a difference. Uh, most Mustang racks only have about a five and a quarter to five and a half inches of travel. And I found a way going in there safely to uh, getting about six inches of travel out of them. And anytime you do any angle, uh, most mods, it's generally around the spindle, you get angle, but you sacrifice something else. And in uh, the steering rack, it's free angle. So anything you get out of the rack, it, it's only a plus, uh, unless you get too much, but I kind of already did the research on my racks, like keep it in that safety level, mm -hmm. but it's legitimately just uh, less, less uh, or more travel. And some people think uh, too, like, oh, I want to get a quick ratio rack, right? Well, quick ratio racks only have like two and a half turns out of them and they act really quick. Well, the other part of getting angle out of these is shortening the steering arm and there's some other stuff, but majorly shorten the steering arm on the spindle. But when you do that, it also creates uh, uh, a faster turn radius as well. Not just more, but faster. Mm -hmm. So now you've got super fast steering just based off adding a custom knuckle and then you add a super fast uh, close ratio rack. Now you're doing 80 down a freeway and you hiccup and you're like three lanes over. So <laughs> I try using a not uh, high ratio rack, uh, just a normal wide turn rack because it ends up becoming a quick ratio when you're done and driving it. <laughs> and then they're actually cheaper and easier to get, or it used to be anyways. But there's not much, too much special. There's a Cobra rack that says they give you some better feel, but uh, I don't know. This is what I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew there was a difference, and because I know a lot of times, like, uh, like for for example, for for my SE, I don't run like the the rack spaces or anything on that car, just because I know too much turning radius will blow out the seals on there. Yeah, yeah, you can overdo it on the rack. Yeah, you, next thing you know, you slide and you yeah. like wondering, like, why the hell I keep blowing out racks? Yeah. Keep blowing out the seals. Yeah, the Fox racks. If you get over six inches, you uh, over push the rack out of the seals and it, and it will. And the newer racks uh, actually have more travel than that. Um, and can get all the way to an inch and a quarter, but then only certain ones. So, uh, but all our angle kits originated on the Mustang. So I'm used to six inches of travel uh, built into our kits off the spindles we use. Hmm. So even on the newer ones that have more travel, sometimes they don't have that travel out the gate. They only have like five and a half, five and three quarters. Very little ones had over six inches, but sometimes on the new edge racks, uh, they, they already come out the box or I have to add limiters to them. Huh. So they don't overshoot, and, it, and the steering is still all the same. When I was talking to Phil, they were uh, they were also saying that you know if I was going to be running their coilovers on the Fox, they're like I need to make sure I had the uh, dunking kit. So I'm pretty sure you're the one who worked with them on making these coilovers for this chassis, correct? Yeah, me and a guy named uh, Edward Zapata. Edward Zapata worked on uh, Odie's uh, race team. So we got some more good information for you. I told you this video is going to be full of info. Uh, Duncan's explaining like why the coilover set up so good on here and the problem with the Fox body suspension And I was like, you know what pause. Let's retake that cuz I need to I need this info. This is actually good info I was saying uh, the biggest increase Well to start we were talking about doing angle kits on these cars and at first I was trying to street drive them Where the springs and everything sit, you know, the wheel sits inside the car. It don't look like a drift car It just looks like a normal car I wanted to be able to drive my car to the track and then be at the track, be fairly competitive and drive back home and then drive it to work during the day, but not have uh, tire wear issues or my wheels sticking outside from the fender. Um, so at first I was making angle kits. I was on a budget with stock springs, lowering springs or whatever, and having to do all this work to this stock ass control arm. And if you add up the time and energy you put into this versus just buying an arm already made, uh, it could save you some time. but. I was so into making these kits where I was cutting into the frame and it's a long story what I was trying to do to conceal this until I came up with this formula that Mike ended up actually getting on his car where it's a simple uh, maximum off the shelf control arm. I do use uh, a Steeda times two ball joint uh, with a coilover setup and a Steeda times two ball joint. It simulates a drop spindle which is huge on these cars. They have a huge bump steer problem right from the factory. And when you lower them, they just get worse. But what we were talking about, the biggest upgrade of why I want people to get rid of the stock spring is the advantages you get from a coilover. 
and a coilover on these cars is like night and day compared to uh like i was talking about mike on his sc car it basically already came with stock coilovers so there's not a, like a a geometry pinpoint of where this sits advantage so to speak that i'm about to explain on the mustang uh yeah coilover you probably have better spring rates better valving than a stock something obviously but in this car it's so huge to get away from these stock springs and go to a coilover because this was never a coilover to begin with you have this like engineering mechanics advantage your spring would be right here right and if you look at the size of this spring it's basically a freaking truck spring i could probably find this on a ford f-150 ranger and if you look at this setup and if you understand that nutcracker we were talking about at your grandma's house that you would break walnuts hope open with you know you, it's like a lever like this you would grab it like this and then you would have the walnut in here right well very easy with leverage you can crack open that walnut what they did on this they made a walnut so thick that you can't freaking break it and it's that truck spring so that's why one of the reasons these rides suck so bad is it's opposite working against you uh, a nutcracker where instead of uh, right here where your lever would be they're holding it together trying to dampen it but they got the walnut in here overpowering it's so huge that it's very hard for an average shock or strut to control the dampening of a over large truck spring it's a it's, it's just a really stupid system so the advantage here is putting the coil over on the outside here so like the nutcracker instead of having your spring in here where leverage is kind of working against you trying to push this you know crush this it's out here where it's the you know the engineering advantage of your thing the nutcracker part or where the coil is is on the very outside here and that's how we'll show you later the springs on the coil over are only a quarter size of that but it feels stiffer and you get a lot more advantage of it to where you don't need such a big spring a little spring out here does a lot more work but then this little spring is a lot more easier for your shock to uh control the dampening because it's not so big it's very small so you're able to get a lot more crisp precise you know fine tuning uh reaction out of it it's, you know it's, it's a lot coilovers on a mustang i think is huge the coilovers that phil offers our knees is a true coilover just like the fronts but go in the back of the rear end housing where your uh, shock would go. So the same effect here, where we got rid of the nutcracker design, we did in the back. And now you could go over a speed bump of feels and you feel like you're in an SVT Cadillac. It's, <laughs> it's, it's firm, but it's not harsh. It's soft, but when you need it to be performance and go down a road, mm -hmm. it, it's amazing. All in all, and as you're uh, telling the time, on the phone, Nah, not I. Dude, I'm like, when it comes to like my cars, I'm like hella hands on with, with like what's going on there, yeah. how you know how does it work, why is it better, so. Yeah. Especially from your experience too, getting shaded. Like, oh yeah, for sure. Uh, it takes a lot for me to. Uh, it takes a lot for me to trust someone, and especially what you went through. It means a lot that you trust me <laughs> on your fucking car. You know what I mean? Fox is like we were hella into him back in the day, so. Now it's like, you know, I, obviously when I was younger, I had walked away from the Fox chassis because I got into two, uh, two 240s and stuff. But it's like now that, you know, Aaron has his and, and we're back on it. Now I'm like, all right, I want to know as much as I can and learn as much as I can about this chassis. Yeah. So that's how I do when, when I get like obsessed with something and I'm, I'm getting ready to start a build. It's like I get obsessed with information on that car. <laughs> Like even the vets, dude, like the vets, I was like that, the 350s, anytime I'm starting something new, I'm like, I've never worked on this car. Let me start taking shit apart. I want to see, you know, how it works. That's just, that's just always been my thing. That's where our camber caster place is going to be going. Got new Max Motorsport camber caster place for this thing, for the coilovers. So this would have been the part of the process where I would have been calling Duncan like, hey, where's all this shit go, yo? Millions, pieces, spacers, washers. It's like muscle memory for him. Yeah. Sort of. Hell of little pieces. Yeah. Oh, you know what? You told me this car was an 89, right? Don't fit. It's not supposed to. 
It's a different part number. I kind of fucked up. <laughs> I told them this was an 89, and then he confirmed earlier today that this was a 90. So the 89 and the 90 uh, camera caster plates are slightly different, but he said he has a set of the 90s at home. So we'll do that later, and we'll just continue with with uh, getting other stuff on. Still got a lot of stuff to do anyway. 5,000 degrees of angle right here. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, these are fucking beefy. I did this spindle a little different. This was down here. This is like a 94, no, what year is this? This is 99 to 2004 spindle. And this would have been a straight arm like this. So what I did is I chopped it here and basically raised the arm so the Ackerman would fit correct for our Mustang, our, our Fox body. And instead of just welding this little area where you had to trust the weld to hold your shit together, um, I put that entire arm up here and then weld a 360 degree around the whole part of it. So it's a much wider structural holding and the part of the spindle that normally would have been cut and reattached, this whole length of it, I never touched. It never mm. got weakened, it never got cut. And instead of just having a little spot that's welded, I have a whole spot like this welded all the way around it. So besides figuring out the metal to properly weld it properly to make it the strongest, I connected it in a way that it would be way stronger. Hmm. Uh, so now we're like, if the guys do wreck, they're crumpling their whole car, but the spindle survives. Yeah, I can't even see where it was really welded at either. Yeah, I try to, at first I was doing that so no one could try to copy my shit. They didn't know how I was doing it. <laughs> All right, so we got the right camber caster place on this thing. So the 89 and the 90s are different. So make sure if you're getting them, you got to make sure you got the right year make and model for your shit or else it ain't going to fit. Don't be hiding. What you running out the <laughs> shot I'm for? This nigga running like he don't want to be seen. Be <laughs> hiding like a side chick. <laughs> yeah, now coilover's going in. We're hanging. Come on, put the black and thin in there now. These are pretty nice. They have like rotator cups, so no matter how fucked your K member is, it doesn't jam on and break your K, uh, your rack and pinion. Unless it articulated a little bit for like an imperfect mount. It's about to be my time attack car. I'm about to be out here gapping Lex. You are a goddamn lie. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but this will actually do pretty good. You, you know what the problem with time attack or grip is you don't see cars like this come out. So if you did, you cap it. But if you did actually Man. do it, that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool, Mike. I, you know, I must say, there's not a lot of things that you do that are cool. <laughs> <laughs> This pretty cool. <laughs> I bet you Duncan would like to see his his uh, suspension being time attacked. I would actually. I, I think this is way better than it did factory or handling steering. Yeah, yeah. Well, you remember way back in the SCCA and NASA days, these dominated shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people now complain about it because we we got a taste of technology. Mm -hmm. But this was the shit, dog. Couldn't nobody tell nobody nothing if you had a hard running fifty, especially this is the five O joint, right? Yeah. Boy, boy, yeah, these were the jam. So, I mean, <clears throat> you just put hands to it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to do it, but come on, <laughs> bruh. Come on, bruh. I know I'm I got, I got nips city, right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm flicking the city. Y'all didn't see that. <laughs> it's gonna, hey, COVID, man. My experience, I've kind of noticed uh, I can stick a tape measure in here and anywhere between two and a half to two inches, uh, you know, uh, just adjusting it right here is a pretty good to get you close in the ballpark. Of a, of a okay ride height to start with. And then I just do it right and left so both sides are matched and then this will get us on the ground before we can make any more judgments. Hmm. And where, about where do you think this uh, handles best as far as like ride height? Like what you set up? Uh, it's really hard to say. I mean, ultimately suspension wise, you want your control arms pretty much flat just for the bump steer proper properties. Oh. But uh, I mean, I mean, the lower you can go before you sacrifice suspension just depends on the suspension you got. So, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Well, I got, uh, you know, this Duncan Motorsports <laughs> stuff over here. Right? 
Uh, <laughs> I think this is like some of the These best stuff you can get for the street. Right? This is actually Maximum Motorsports control arms. Right, but it's the one that you've got. So his front wheels is going to be. No, 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 no. No, uh, I got stage two angle kit. Stage two, yeah. This is. Uh, stage three give you that wise fab yeah, tractor. Yeah. I told him I didn't want the tractor because I wasn't yeah. going wide body. This is a this is our tame uh, street, street setup. Setup. It's still got like street Ackerman and. And, uh, How many degrees angle? Uh, if he had the forward offset control arms, he could get up to 50 degrees. But he's going to be between well, that's, that's pretty hot, right? Yeah. He, he's going to be between 40 and 45 now. Okay. Because these. Are What's like a 240 30? stock? 40. Yeah. So you'll be in the door. Yeah, yeah. Because I was going to say hmm. these are like 30 something, right? Or Less. lower than that. They're like we, 25 or 30. Those, yeah. Yeah. Those factory are like 29 or 30. So anything above that is yeah. Is, is good. It's huge. Maximum does not recommend these ball joints for uh, what they do, but they road race with like 315 or 325 front slicks mm -hmm. where they're almost up to two G's in a corner. And it's a lot of weight to move. It's a around. lot of weight to, yeah. Around. yeah. And uh, they just don't trust them. And they said they've seen them fail. And I, who the hell am I to argue with Maximum, right? But in our defense, we're not pushing G's like that. Mm -hmm. And we have totaled cars and at the very least only bit one of these ball joints. I mean, in wrecks. And they're <laughs> easily, or I shouldn't say easily found, but they're readily available. They, they are. Place. Yeah, you can order them. I mean, they're a little pricey, but then if you get... But you could have them on deck. You could have them on deck, right. yeah. Yeah, you could definitely have extras. But by the time you get in a wreck and break one of those, that's your least of your problems. Right. Yeah, the, the arm is destroyed and everything. everything yeah. <laughs> I think they're good decision. ball joints, but I wouldn't recommend them, <laughs> you know, uh, based off what Maximum's experience is, you know, I wouldn't recommend it for, but anything street or drift or, I mean, up to that point, I think they're awesome. I, I've never had one fail, break, bend, anything. Your Maximum Motorsports extended bump steer for the longer arms that are using this this is a an old road racers trick using sn95 length arms on a fox body give mm -hmm. yourself a little bit of a wider stance and wider yeah well basically wider stance and then these arms cleared a lot with the angle and they're about the only arm i trust aftermarket that you can put on the street She said, but she was lying. people that be putting this in backwards <laughs> right <laughs> yeah please put all your bolts like this through the arm the arm will just live a happy life <laughs> come on it's tight all right so Duncan's doing the engine mounts right now trying to get the driver side out passenger side is in well, it's hella dark so y'all can't really see it but yeah he's getting the, the stock mount out and then these are the ones that they're getting replaced with some solids all right so while i was out running to grab some freaking lug nuts for this thing duncan said we came up with a dilemma so remember i was telling y'all i was like i don't know what the hell this shock is aaron's car didn't have it and this is my first time even seeing this thing but yeah it's a little dilemma so the coilovers is going to hit right here because the coilover is a bigger body and I haven't ran into this before because most of the time when people get coilovers, they have already eliminated this quad shock. And that's what this is. And people are like, what the fuck's a quad shock? This was Ford's silly idea to fix even a stupider idea of adding a huge oval bushing in the front of this control arm. It's literally this big. And when you give it gas or off the gas, this thing rotates like this and it lets the whole rear end move around and you're like why would they do that because this wasn't a race car this was an off-the-shelf production line for your daily driver and they had women and old people driving this 
And if this was all solid and what we want for performance, it would break loose and lose traction and lose control a lot more easier. Mm -hmm. So they made this uh, for the rear end to articulate a lot easier to get maximum grip underneath uh, normal clutch slips or minor acceleration. And it worked really good to not break loose minorly for uh, an average driver. Now, even with these blown out quad shocks or if they're good or not, and you get a real driver in here and you get the gas and this thing starts breaking loose, you're gonna get a bunch of axle play uh, and it, you know, wheel hop and stuff. So how they fixed it was adding on this stupid ass shock. And it's, uh, it's a stupid idea and then another stupid idea to fix the first stupid idea. And the way to <laughs> fix this is uh, I, I recommend a maximum heavy duty, uh, heavy duty or extreme heavy duties. They're lower model maximum offers for this thing undisclosed it's just to stay in competition with the steep stuff that's the cheap stuff that's out there mm -hmm. but it's really for like trailer clean cars hmm. you know they won't recommend it on a track anything on a track or any serious use heavy duty heavy duty or extreme heavy duty heavy duty to me is way more than enough but in essence it gets rid of this big old bushing and gets you to a regular small tight bushing that doesn't have a lot of play and that alone eliminates the wheel hop to where you can get rid of this uh, quad shock. So what we're gonna do right now, just to get his coilovers on and get him to ride height, we're gonna get rid of this quad shock so we got space in there, and then we're gonna order up some control arms and get them on there later, and then you'll be good to go. I actually should have got these for you. Uh, I just, it's been so long since I've seen a stock car. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot any of this actually, but now that we're here, yeah, we gotta get that and get rid of that, and we'll be all right. So as original as this car is, I did notice something that's kind of cool, and I came across this earlier years. Uh, these are your fuel lines coming from the gas tank. You can see all these zip ties. I guarantee you what happened. The fuel lines normally come behind this strap. This is your gas tank strap. And where my fingers are, are normally where your gas lines sit. So you see how close they are to the exhaust? Uh, they're only held on by a little plastic clip that's literally just fell apart in my hands right here <laughs> and it, it burns and you can tell his fuel lines have been damaged they zip tied them all over there and by the time they burn it's kind of like ah oh, shoot it happened but what they did that uh what i do now to fix all of this they simply put the fuel lines behind this strap so you just simply undo this bolt this gas tank strap nothing's going to fall out you're only taking one you pull it down and then you put the fuel lines behind the strap and put it right back together and now you have a big metal strap keeping your fuel lines away from the exhaust big helpful thing uh, so for all the fox body people if you haven't done that you need to go ahead and do that yeah it's huge it actually already happened to this car so we need to check aaron's car got to make sure my boy car don't burn to the floor yeah it happens what we have right here is the area where the coilover would go and I kind of already pre-marked some of this you can kind of see it's not a lot it's very little trimming some people literally just take a wrench with there and peel it out I try not to um, but what my main concern here is is to trim as little bit as possible uh, it doesn't take a lot and you're gonna put the coil over there in a couple times and you're just gonna trim a little bit but it, if you're in here and you get this shock out of here and you really get in here and look you realize that you can cut my two fingers all the way around here and you're gonna think man that's way easier than all this work but don't do that because in here it's kind of hard to see there's some spot welds that hold this whole cut together and if you cut that out only half of your shock support and the minute you cut this out all of it you just locked half to your shock shock support and the cut that holds all this in is going to fall inward of the car and basically fall out and you're going to slam on the ground so don't cut past these spot welds just cut very very little bit it's literally only a quarter inch above and a little bit down and if you follow the shock body all you're doing is going a little bit more I just done this so many times I'm pretty sure this is right where it needs to be done but don't cut more than you have to because you're gonna have problems later on the rear coilovers on still need to get that stock spring out but next on the list is we're gonna be uh, running the lines for the hydro e-brake right now so for some reason I have no clue why but this clip 
uh, decided to lose the audio, but right here it was just running the hydro lines through where the uh, speedometer cable goes. I was running that through there, and then right here, these are the two lines, the in and outs that are going to go for your inline hydro setup for the Fox. And these are basically two little adapters right here uh, that just basically twist on to the, the factory hard lines. And that way you can mount those, um, those braided lines up to it. Man, you guys can see the increase in angle, dude. This is crazy. This thing has a lot more angle than it had before. Jesus. I can definitely work with this angle. This is definitely enough to have some fun with when you slide in plenty of angle. And then I'm going to show you guys the hydro. Because we do have it uh, sitting in here. The lines and everything are all ran. But this is what the hydro is looking like. It's going to mount up to that place where the shifter sits. And then, yeah, it's going to sit like that. So we got a lot done today. Been here all day. We were going to put this thing on the ground and start adjusting the ride height. But unfortunately, I don't have my thin wall. I don't know where it's at. And... We can't get in here to tighten the lug nuts. So we'll probably end up wrapping this up tomorrow because we still have to uh, throw the Cobra brakes and stuff on here. So Cobra brakes, rotors, and all that are, are coming tomorrow. But yeah, kind of wanted to see what this thing was going to be looking like sitting on the ground. But literally a freaking socket is, is holding us back. <laughs>